in holiday spirit because why not, right? What's better than Christmas music? To bring him back the jolly. All right, so today we are learning about roller coasters. We are going to be talking about speed at different points on the roller coasters, and you guys are going to be learning where the roller coaster cart will have the most kinetic energy, most potential energy, and where it's going to be going the fastest. So just like the first two videos, follow along, pause and, pause and play as you go, and we should help you out with the answers. Feliz Navidad! Okay, so we are officially done with cars and ramps, but we are moving on to roller coasters. So you'll notice that this looks a little bit different than the car and the ramp did. Um, for one, it has hills, so it's curvy. So um, we're going to start off with our roller, with our Oh. <laughs> Miss Borsani is struggling. Okay. <laughs> With the um, this is our little roller coaster cart at the top of the ramp. So then we're going to release the cart and we're going to let it go all the way down to the bottom and we're going to see what happens. So we're going to use these photo gates again and we are going to start with our photo gates at different positions. So we are going to put it at position one and there's seven different positions. So we're going to start at the top. Go down to the middle, go down to the bottom, middle, top, middle, and bottom. And we are going to record the time that it takes the roller coaster cart to roll all the way through that photo gate at each different position. So for question number one, you are forming a hypothesis. So what I want you guys to decide is if the marble is traveling at its fastest speed, it is at position blank. So we have position one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I want you to tell me what position do you think the marble is going to be going the fastest at and why? <laughs> All right guys, so now we're gonna look at some data that goes along with our roller coaster. And basically, on the chart here, if you follow along with me, there are seven positions like Ms. Borsani was talking about. And at each position, if you look at the picture on your Google Doc, it shows you that we are measuring from the table up to wherever this photo gate is posi uh, positioned. So that is why the heights go from being taller to lower, to lower to higher, higher, because it's moving from here, and then we move it down and we measure from here. So that is why these numbers kind of are all over the place. Then you look at distance the marble travel. This isn't going from, okay, the starting spot to wherever the photo gate is. This time we're taking the diameter of the marble because it is going to activate the start and stop of the photo gate. So we want to know how far or how fast by the time, how fast the marble went through the photo gate from the, fr the front of the photo gate and the end of the photo gate. So that is going to give us a time. So then we can take the distance, which is 1.9 centimeters of the diameter, that it travels through the photo gate and then we can divide those two to get us a speed of how fast the marble was going at that point on our track. So the distance divided by time gives me the speed. Remember, we need to look at our units. And so if the distance um, from my marble is measured in centimeters and our time is measured in seconds, when we put in our uh, speed, it's gonna be centimeters per second. And make sure you add that to your answers here um, in these last four blank boxes that you're going to be checking. track defect affect its speed. So we have to look over here. We're looking at column two and we're looking at this last column here. So our height and our speed. First thing I want you to notice is there is no pattern. So when we see height, we're not going from lowest height to highest height. And for speed, you're not going to see a pattern in your numbers there either. Um, remember, we went from high to middle to low to middle to high. So that's the pattern that we're seeing here. Um, so when you're comparing your speed to your height, you have to actually look across the row. So when your height is really tall, is your speed really fast or is it really slow? 
um, when your height is really low, is your speed fast or is it slow? So those are the comparisons that you need to know in order to answer question number three. Looking at question number four and five, whoops, okay. So question four says, at what point does the marble have the most kinetic energy? Now remember, the most kinetic energy means that it is moving fast. It has a lot of motion. So the most kinetic energy is going to come at the bottom of the steepest hill. So this is what our roller coaster looks like. This is the picture that you're going off of. Where is the bottom of the steepest hill? That is where you're going to have the most kinetic energy. Question five says, at what point does the marble have the most potential energy? Now that's going to be the highest that we are off the ground. Um, that's the highest point on our roller coaster. That's where we have the most amount of stored energy. So where is the highest marble on this roller coaster? What number is that? That is your most potential energy. Okay, so number six says, list the numbered positions in order from where the marble has the fastest speed to where the marble has the slowest speed. So I'm going to give you the fastest and the slowest, and I'm gonna have you fill in all the in-between. So the marble is going fastest at the lowest point on the track. So the lowest point on the track is number four, position four, that's where it's going the fastest. And then it's going the slowest at the highest point on the track, which is marble number one. So see if you can fill in the rest of those knowing that the fastest position is at the bottom and the slowest position is at the top. Okay, so we're gonna move on to seven and eight here. For seven, we're just doing more math problems. I know, bringing math into science, not super throw, but it's easy. So the speed formula is distance divided by time. So you're gonna go to each picture here, figure out what the distance is, and then figure out what the time is, and then you're able to calculate the speed. If the picture does not give you both of those things, you will not be able to calculate the speed. So this says, for the pictures where there is not enough information to calculate, write not enough data. So whatever letters do not have all the data that's needed, write not enough data. And then the ones that do, I wanna make sure you use the right units. So remember, when you have, let's say, time is in seconds and your distance is in meters, your units would be distance divided by time, so it would be meters per second. So remember, whatever your answers are here for speed, that you're using the right units. And then moving on to um, number eight, it says, suppose you measure the speed of the marble at the lowest place on the roller coaster by repeating the activity on two different heights. So would your results be the same? So thinking if we had this table, and then we had a really, really high table over here, and we did the exact same thing, would the speed of our marble be the same? So thinking through, is the hills the same? Um, is my marbles the same? So is it gonna keep my speed the same? And then if you think back to last week, we talked about gravitational potential energy. And we talked about if something had the same mass, but they were at different heights, how did the gravitational potential energy change? One that is higher has more gravitational potential energy than the other. So is that going to be different if I have two tracks on different size tables? Okay, questions nine and 10 now. So question nine is just asking what the difference is between kinetic and potential energy. Kinetic energy, remember, is the energy of motion and potential energy is stored energy or energy of related to height and position. So looking at question number 10, it says write top, middle, or bottom with its location on the diagram to the right and the energy listed below. So where we have the most kinetic energy. So over here in this diagram, we have a boy throwing a ball up in the air and then the ball is coming back down. Our most kinetic energy is going to be down here where the ball is coming back down to the ground, where it's at the lowest point. Um, that's where we're going to have that most, um, the most amount of motion, it's lowest to the ground, so it's going to have the most amount of kinetic energy. We're going to have mostly potential energy when it's at the very top of the arc. So when the boy throws the ball up in the air, it reaches its peak, most potential energy up at the top. We're going to have half potential energy and half kinetic energy where it's somewhere in the middle, when it's on its way back down. Not all the way to the bottom, but just somewhere in the middle, half potential, half kinetic. Soldier boy, tell